Welcome to another week of Caps Chat. I'm Cody Lefkoe, it's the voice of your Capitals, and this week I'm here with a pair of brothers, Vinny Weiss and Thomas Weiss. Uh, T-Bone, obviously the one that everybody, you know, sort of calls you by, and I guess let's start with that. T-Bone, where did that whole name come from? Yeah, so that kind of originated from my dad back in the day. When I was named Thomas, he just, I don't know, he liked it, but it didn't really sit well with him. So he kind of just came up with T-Bone. And then my, a lot of people call me T, too. Like, my mom calls me T. A lot of my teachers call me T. And it just kind of stuck. And I've never gone by Thomas my whole life. That's, <laughs> it's funny that they'll they'll name you something. They won't call you it. I mean, that happens sometimes. I had a friend who's first name is Lawrence and they did it because of a family member but everybody calls him Scott which is his middle name so it's <laughs> yeah yeah it is weird how that works I don't know it just it just kind of stuck and then Thomas is like if someone says Thomas I'm in the room I basically don't even respond to it, it just kind of in one ear out the other um let's talk though you guys are quarantining here in Verona obviously brothers in the same house same family uh, what what have you guys been up to though during this time? Well, uh, I'm playing a lot of golf. Just kind of going with the flow here, you know, enjoying some of this nice weather we got. I'm a real big fan of the, uh, the beautiful days. I like spending time outside, taking the dogs for a walk, um, getting some workouts in. Probably should be getting a little more in, but that's all right. You know, it's, <laughs> it's a long summer. Uh, yeah, we haven't been doing too much. It's like everyone else, I'm guessing. Don't don't forget to mention your daily nap. Uh, yeah, I got a I got a daily nap. I like to stick to a very strict routine. I'm very routine oriented. I wake up I wake up fairly early. I started off waking up pretty late. You know, I would stay up a little too late playing video games and stuff. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of that, so I kind of kind of cut that out of my routine. Now I haven't played in a couple of weeks. I've been getting up earlier and, you know, I wake up and make a smoothie every day and kind of go from there. I, I was in an online class, but I finished that up now. Um, yeah, checking the stock market, uh, watch the news a little bit. You know, I kind of go throughout the day and see what it brings me. I hit some golf balls in the yard sometimes. Usually at night we go play golf. Um, but, yeah, I uh, haven't been doing anything too exciting. Are you a business guy then? Do you do you invest in the stock market or at least try to? <laughs> well, you know, yeah, I try. Build that or, early try. portfolio. I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm real stressed out right now about what's going on. It's getting a little better every day, but, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's actually, uh, I was texting I was texting Steve, Stephen Davis the other day, and he's in the same boat, you know. We're real stressed, stressed out. out. I'll, have to, I'll have to make sure uh, I'll let him know that I was talking about him on here. But, yeah. I, He's in the same boat. T-Bone, what about you? What have you been up to? Pretty much the same as him. He usually wakes up a little bit earlier than me. He's been waking up around like 7. I usually wake up around 8.30, get maybe a workout in, hit some balls in the yard, uh, play golf at the course, shoot some pucks in the garage. We have a nice little shooting area in our basement too, so that's nice. And we have like some free weights and stuff, so it's pretty easy to get workouts in, but nothing too exciting really. Just kind of going with the flow, like like Vin said. So, do you guys in your base in your basement? Do you have a net, and do you is it just a cement floor that you guys shoot on? Yeah, pretty much. We got a net down there, and it's basically like a back room. And I mean, it's kind of we've had it for a while, and since we've gotten older and started shooting harder, it's kind of needs a little bit of work now There's some stuff in the ceiling some of the duct work and that kind of thing that I gotta probably go fix you know one of the vents going into my parents bedroom is totally detached down there I don't know if they know that but just for they will the now our stuff and puck showing <laughs> yeah. up yeah exactly uh but no it's it's good it's good it's all you need like we got a nice net and we have like some old like some plastic pads we shoot off of just to kind of keep our make our sticks last longer so it's nice you just got to get a bunch of pillows and just start lining things so they, when it hits yeah, exactly. off the crossbar. Exactly. We, have, yeah. we have like a couple pipes that when we hit them, they'll start like leaking water yeah, and stuff. We, so there, yeah. we, there's one, there's one pipe that's like wrapped in a big like carpet in a big blue yeah, carpet. It's, because it's, when it's, we it's, hit a, it, it's like a, yeah, it's one of those moving carpets they put in elevators, you know? 
I think it's like the sewage pipe too. So I, I mean, yeah, if it hit it, it hasn't like exploded or anything, but it, it'll start leaking out the bottom and that's not good. So we got a big blanket around that thing now. You guys have like a tiny backyard or garage area driveway? Can't go out? <laughs> well, uh, you know, well, we have a garage, but sometimes we shoot in there, but we kind of, that kind of got shut down after T totally wrecked, like wrecked all the drywall behind the net. <laughs> we had one of those old nets that had like the, the borders on the sides and on the top in case you missed the net but I guess that wasn't enough so the drywall totally wrecked you know parents aren't too impressed with that so we kind of keep it in the basement now yeah mostly concrete walls and we got a plywood wall down there too the plywood walls falling apart though now too yeah that thing's falling apart too I guess put some screws in that thing take care of that yeah so a couple questions that, that we've sort of had obviously looking back through how you guys have played um Vinny we'll start with you obviously the older brother of the two you played for the Caps organization pretty much your whole time up until you hit the junior age and even then a little bit um but while you were playing youth hockey you know uh midget bantam everything in there you played with a couple of guys that came through the Caps organization it seems like the Caps sort of like like the homegrown talent um in 2016-17 you played with Anthony Callen obviously Vern from this year's team and Brandon Suter. I mean, talk about that and then talk about when you were able to play for the Caps, just how much easier it made it having guys on that team. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's cool. I kind of, I mean, Anthony is a year older than me. He always played for like the Caps youth organization too. Uh, me and Brandon played together. We've been really good friends since, I don't know, we were nine or 10. Um, we played for the old 99 Capitals and we were D partners the whole time. We actually didn't play together much at all this year, but no, it was, it was pretty cool. I, uh, I, I was, I was an affiliate player that first year. I only played a few games, but I thought it was, I mean, it was a good experience. We played at the Coliseum back then. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, it was, I can't really say anything bad about it. It was all great. <clears throat> and T sort of the same thing for you. You, started with the caps this year uh on the junior level you did play for the youth organization for a while but then you switched over to the chicago mission um i guess first question is why why did you feel that uh the mission was going to take you a little further than staying here well the mission is just i don't know it's, it's great I, I always had a few buddies from like spring stuff that i played with that played for the mission and they would always talk about how great it was and you know about like the organization and how great their schedule was and stuff and their coaching staff too adrian coin gino cavallini uh, anders Sorensen too like just great influences so i just played there for a couple of years just to see how it would go and it went really well a great time there and most of those kids that that were on those teams are in the ushl now um and for you it's sort of the same thing as Vinny. I mean, he had a year or two with some of those guys that I mentioned, but you had other guys that you played with. Uh, you played with uh, Jack Horbach for, I think, four of the last five years in in youth hockey. You played with Hunter Weiss your final year with the mission before coming back. So this year, when you were brought into Madison, when you were brought to the Capitals, I mean, it, how was that transition, obviously, with your brother there as well? Yeah, it was great, too, because I've known Carson my whole life, too, uh, Jack, Hunter, my brother, obviously, Brandon. So, like, almost half the team or, like, a ton of guys on the team I already was really good buddies with. So, it wasn't even really, like, a big transition. I just kind of came in and fit in right away. Like, Brock and Frank, too. I knew those guys. Just So, it was, it was really easy. Vinny, for you, a lot of brothers that we've talked to are, have a year difference, maybe a two-year difference. You guys have, have quite – a difference between your age groups. Um, what was it like having your younger brother come and be on the same team with you? Probably the only time you guys are going to get to play together. Yeah, it was great. I really got to show him who was boss and practice and stuff without getting in trouble. <laughs> I could kind of manhandle him and stuff. He might disagree, but you know, just ask the other guys on the team. I was clearly dominant. Uh, but no, it was awesome. We've always kind of been trying to play together. Uh, we we were possibly going to try to when I was a senior in high school and he was a freshman, it just kind of didn't end up working out. Um, that's one of those. Yeah. He played, I think he played for the mission that, that year. Um, 
but no, it it was. I mean, it probably will never happen again. I mean, I would. I don't think it'll happen in college or anything. And but it's like it's the once in a lifetime experience, you know. Um, not a lot of guys have a chance to do that, especially kind of we're three years apart, so it's a bigger gap than most. Was there any sort of, uh, I guess, resentment with him coming in where you sort of had to feel like like you had to put him down a little more and, and teach him as a rookie? <laughs> no, I don't know about that. Not not really. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yes and no. It's just kind of the same treatment as all the rookies. You got to let them know that, you know, they're not the uh, – they're not the top dogs anymore. Not to say that I am, but one of, as one of the older guys, maybe I'm not that great at the game, but, you know, sometimes you got to get in there and show that personality, you know what I mean? So you guys, you play different positions, though. Obviously, there is that age gap where you didn't really get to play together too much, so you didn't really get to learn from each other. But, Vinny, you come in, you're a defenseman. You've been a defenseman, T-Bone. You go, you're on the forward side. You're out there scoring goals and, and throwing a couple more hits. I, how did that happen? Why aren't you guys Why aren't you guys playing together at the same position? I don't know. I I think when I was younger, I thought like I was like a mite or something. Uh, I somehow got stuck at D. And then the next year, like I played D most of the year. I don't really know why. I wasn't choosing where I was playing. And then the next year, the first year I came to the Caps, I think the coach asked, he was like, who's forward and who's D? And I think I raised my hand and said it was D. And then ever since then, I've kind of played D. I've played some forward here and there, too. I played played a little bit this year, obviously, too. But, uh, no, I, I like D better. I'm more, much more comfortable back there. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure how it started. As if you do know. Uh, in in your guys' history, obviously playing through. Um, Vinny, for you, I mean, you've sort of been a, a journeyman. You've played on, I think it's five different teams over the course oh, yeah. of the past three, four seasons. Um, yeah. Like we said, you were an affiliate with the Capitals, played with them, went on to the Magicians in the NA, New Jersey in the NCDC, Janesville, and then traded over to Kenai as well, uh, but yeah. finally planted yourself here in Madison this year. I mean, take us through that journey and, and how much fun or how much hassle it was going through it. Oh, I don't know if I would call it fun, but you know, it, it's obviously hockey. Ah, uh, no. So that, uh, that first year I was an affiliate, I kind of planned on playing for the Caps the next year. Um, but I, then as camp came around and stuff, I kind of didn't know how much I was really going to play and I was going to be a young guy. And I obviously thought I was a lot better than I was. I was young and stupid. Um, looking back, I obviously should have stayed the whole time and things would have been much smoother, I would guess, but you know, whatever. So that year I signed a tender with the Minnesota Magicians during the season, like during the U18 season. So I planned to go there. Uh, so I went there. Things just ended up not going so well. So I got released from there, actually. Uh, and then I ended up in New Jersey for a couple months and maybe played 30 games or something there. Um, and that it was good. Our team was not very good. I'll say that. But I had good billets. I liked my teammates. Uh, I played a ton. So I think it was good for my development in that sense. Uh, and then the next year, I Janesville's obviously you know, a 50 minute drive from here. I ended up going to camp. I knew some guys in the team. Um, kind of made it out of camp there, and that was going great. Uh, then, in about that year, as last year, at the trade deadline, actually, I ended up getting traded to Kenai, uh, and that. You know, to hear that news isn't ideal. I thought things were going well. And then kind of this past couple of weeks, you know, there's a coaching change and that didn't seem to work out in my favor very well. Uh, it's not really something I want to get into. But, uh, yeah, I ended up going to Kenai. I, like, when you're here, you're going to go to Alaska for a couple of months. That's not usually something that sounds too great. But, no, it was a 
it was good. I had super, I had a ton of fun there. I actually got to go skiing there. My billets were awesome. We were, I mean, we got to like shoot guns and stuff in the backyard. We'd blow stuff up. It was really cool. I mean, so there's definitely a lot of life experience in that that I never would have gotten without, I mean, some of the decisions I've made with hockey. Um, so then once last year was over, we didn't make playoffs with Kenai. Um, I didn't especially want to go back there just because I, this was my last year of juniors and I wanted to be somewhere where I'd have a chance to be kind of exposed to more schools. And I didn't think Alaska was probably the best spot for that. So I kind of spent the whole summer trying to figure out where I was going to play. And I uh, text, ended up texting Garrett actually a couple of times and texted with him. And then I was skating at the rink a little bit and I talked to him and he said I could come to training camp in the fall. And I kind of went from there, ended up making the team. And can't thank him enough for giving me that opportunity. It's something I'll always remember and worked out really well. This is by far my most fun junior season even though you know the record wasn't great we we're just getting hot at the end i think we we're gonna make playoffs but three game uh, here sorry we were gonna make yeah playoffs. yeah we sweep ntdp and then the whole league shuts down they don't know what to do yeah funny how that works they just couldn't handle it they couldn't no. handle it exactly <laughs> yeah <clears throat> so yeah that's uh that's about that's the story yeah and you you had some things working against you this year in the sense of you're a 99, only four kids on each team get to be a 99 birth year, an age up birth year. And you only get to keep, I think it's like three kids out of camp. And so you have to go to camp as a 99, hoping to make the team and you do that. So that's, that's sort of adversity in itself just to make the team. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I was definitely not totally planning on making it, but I guess Garrett, <laughs> found it the kindness of his heart to keep me and give me a chance and you know, I really appreciate that the the word that he always used with us um and it was mainly after I think that Youngstown game he said you were like a water bug you were just you know you're you're <laughs> a smaller smaller guy but but you're a pest you're pesty you get in there you play the gritty areas you play tough you play hard through the whistle so I, I think it was something something big to say there uh from Garrett yeah yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. That's a pretty good compliment coming from him. Obviously, he was a scrapper. Uh, but yeah, I, I appreciate that for sure. And T, for you, um, a little different as well. You were playing this year for Team Wisconsin. You were planning to to stick it out with them, and then injuries and people leaving and stuff like that sort of prompted the necessity to bring somebody else in, and you were next up on that list. You came up, but but you put in some some good work, two goals, two assists, uh, just like Vinny. You play, played hard, <laughs> uh, really, really got into the gritty areas and was able to throw the body around with guys not only older but bigger as well. Yeah, for sure. And I wasn't I obviously wasn't expecting to play for the Capitals this year. I expected to play for TW and then play for high school and then go back to TW after high school. But, you know, things change and – people leave and whatever and I ended up at the Capitals and it was great it was a great experience really cool to play with my brother and like he said can't thank Garrett enough for giving us this opportunity like it was really cool to play together this year and we had a ton of fun sucks that the season ended too when it did because we were we were just getting hot like <laughs> he said three game heater against Team USA I mean one of the best teams in the league so yeah yeah it was, Coming it was really a great fun. week of practice <laughs> yeah yeah really putting in the work it was it was tough because there was about a month left an outside chance of making it but at least carrying some momentum where you know next year then obviously we have Tom Upton now as a new coach uh, <laughs> but with a new year coming up you carry some of that momentum and, and just get more experience for a guy of your age um, for sure yeah and actually with that I guess more towards T-Bone here uh, with coach Upton coming in you know I've sort of been asking guys what what was that call like with him the first time you talked to him and, and what are the expectations for this year? It was good. He was super positive about everything. He sounded just really excited, which is always a good thing. I actually haven't heard like a single thing bad about him. So I'm really excited. And, you know, the call was 
it was short but sweet. He just wanted to check in with everybody, see how everything was going. He said that like if we have any problems with anything, just text him or call him and he'll be there. And he's just really excited to get started. So it should be great. That's good. I know everyone's excited for the next season. Um, right now I had you guys fill out the questionnaire. So let's go over to that. Uh, and we will start with the movie side of things. Um, Vinny on your list, some that we've seen before, I know happy Gilmore, I think a couple guys have had, but I mean, Moneyball's on there. That's probably one of them. I'm a big baseball guy personally. So that's yeah. one of my favorite movies. I'm also a nerd. So the money and the <laughs> aspect, um, Incredibles. I mean, that's, I don't, we haven't had many. Oh, oh uh, it's um, a classic. It's a classic. <laughs> Not much animation on these lists. I think one squeaks in about every week, and I've seen Toy yeah. Story, and I've seen The Incredibles. That's a great movie. Yeah, great movie. Yeah, so you want me to kind of read through here? Yeah, if you want to read through it and just sort of go over why you like them. Okay. Uh, uh, they're not necessarily in order, but these are kind of just my top five. Happy Gilmore, obviously, that's an all-time classic. That's a movie I'm constantly quoting. I've been watching that one for a while. Goodwill Hunting, um, also just an all-time classic. I think there's not many people that would say that's a bad movie. Moneyball, uh, true story, great movie again. I mean, pretty incredible what Billy Bean was able to do there. The Incredibles, that's uh, one of the, probably one of the first movies I ever saw as a kid, and I just. You know, it gets me fired up to Fantastic. see that movie on TV. Yeah, great. Story. Iron Man Two. That's a that's another oh, one. Iron Man Two. I, uh, <laughs> I used to be really into Iron Man Two when I was younger. I used to have like a mini DVD player, and I had like the DVD, and it's I was like plugging into the thing. wall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was plugging <laughs> into the wall and put the disc in there and watch it with my big headphones. I actually saw that before I saw Iron Man One. That was just kind of got me into that kind of thing. I thought those were always pretty entertaining. I was going to say, why did you pick Iron Man 2 over any of the other <laughs> Iron Man? Yeah, yeah, it was the first one I saw. That's why. All right. Uh, and then T on your side, uh, Elf. I mean, at, we've had uh, every single week we have people put down a Will Ferrell movie or multiple Will Ferrell movies, as you did. But Elf is one I don't think we've had anybody put down yet, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Elf, Elf is just fantastic. It's maybe my favorite movie these are just kind of like my top five but for me like I like Elf so much because for him to be able to be like that funny in the movie with no swearing or like it's like a PG movie right like G maybe it's I don't know there's nothing bad in it like it's not like I mind the swearing and the bad stuff but like it's it's hard to be that funny in a movie without it so like that's just he's just fantastic and um what was my other? Oh, the other guys. The other guys is great too. That's probably the most quoted movie in the locker room all year. Right next <laughs> to Old School too. Uh, Ryan Kerwin loved Old School and the other guys. Uh, Dark Knight Rises. That's just a great movie overall. Like the Christian Bale trilogy, Batman trilogy. He's just fantastic in all of them. That was like one of the few like movie series, in my opinion, that they get better as they go on. So, well, The Dark Knight was great, too, but Dark Knight Rises is really good. And then The Wolf of Wall Street, Leo. I mean, don't underestimate Leo. Leo. <laughs> Leo's, just, Leo's great. That's that's a great, another great movie. It's hilarious. And, you know, it's just, I don't know. I think everybody loves that movie. When you guys were going through these lists, was there anything that, any movies that you had that you were deciding between that you had to just leave oh, off? Yeah. There yeah for lot. sure we were we were kind of talking we don't want to really want to have any of the same stuff but there's so many that we i mean could put in there most of the, we like a lot of comedy movies a lot of dumb movies like Step Brothers. obviously that's a pretty common one uh wedding crashers all those types of things are pretty yeah. crashers. big daddy napoleon dynamite yeah, big daddy oh billy yeah. madison dumb and dumber Awesome yeah. power. It's just, just, just real, <laughs> dumb, real dumb, dumb movies, but you just laugh at them. Yeah, it's so funny. Awesome powers. Mike Myers plays like four parts in it. It's just hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny whenever we go through this with people, it seems that the movie side of things are a little more comedy, and then when we switch over to Netflix or TV, there's some comedy in there, but it it sort of changes as well. And and when we oh, go yeah. over to that, I mean. 
looking through both of you. <laughs> it's funny that both of you have entourage on there, actually. I listened to a podcast two weeks ago. They interviewed Doug Allen, who was the, I think, executive producer of Entourage. And then I went through and I binged it all last week. So I'm, I'm, I'm fresh <laughs> on them right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's a great. Fact. But you can see, entourage, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Ozark, entourage, Last Dance, Entourage, Prison Break. I mean, right there, oh, none, none of those are really comedies. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, totally. Um, but, uh, and I love, I love the the Last Dance on there. Obviously, the last one finished up this past weekend. Oh, I'm, God. I'm a kid from Chicago who grew up. Uh, yeah, I was born just before the the second set of championships, okay. and I remember early on watching him and Pippin and and stuff like that, and so being mm. able to relive it but but for you actually that's a good question for you guys who weren't able to live through that era and see what was going on and see how how pumped up Chicago was I mean how how was that for you how did that sort of change your perspective on Jordan in that era yeah so I'm not like neither of us are big basketball people at all like we couldn't care less about a lot of that stuff going on but this I mean it was so good it was phenomenal like every episode they did such a good job he hasn't even watched it either i've watched, uh, I've watched showing... parts of like episodes but not not the okay whole. Yeah. yeah maybe he's seen a little bit when i've been watching it but no it's yeah. just i mean they go through his whole career and showing what it meant to like not only the people of chicago but like everybody in the u.s and even the world like it, i think it's just kind of crazy i mean i kind of had no i obviously i know who jordan is and how big of a deal he is but just to kind of see what was going on during that time is pretty nuts. I think I can't even imagine what it would have been like in person. Yeah, I, for sure. I, I, we we're, we were talking to our mom about it too. And she was saying that like during her life, like there wasn't like a person that was a bigger deal, like in the sports area than him. Like it was just ridiculous. Like everything yeah. that he did was a big deal. And that's talking to someone that, doesn't pay attention to sports oh, at all yeah <laughs> someone that doesn't care at all about sports besides when we're playing yeah uh yeah he went international he was it was just everywhere you looked um but i i think the cool for me the coolest part of that was it was something that can never happen again in the sense that they gave they gave this camera crew unprecedented i mean could you imagine at this day and age being followed around every every second of the day by a camera crew pretty much uh you know and for jordan he couldn't hang out with people so he was hanging out with these camera guys in his hotel room he yeah. was you know in a back room in the locker room half the time sitting yeah. with his own security staff and the camera yeah. like yeah it's just yeah. something nowadays that you could never i don't think anybody would allow. No. yeah it's crazy uh, other ones on here you guys had a little crossover in the office and ozark um and I always love to ask it, it for the office. How many times through do you think you guys have watched the complete set? I think, I think like on my own, well, the first time I watched it, I watched like the full time through like every episode in a row. And then I watched it one more time, like every episode in a row. But now when I watch it, I kind of just like go through and like read a description for an episode and like see if I like that one and then click on it. Or if it's like on TV, it's always on Comedy Central. So like in our kitchen, it's like always on. If, if nothing else is on like that, we just turn that on. Yeah. Yeah, a lot. Definitely a lot. It's just, I don't, I've only gone through and it probably, oh, actually I take that. I think twice I've gone through like every episode. And then it's, yeah, like Tisa, it's just constantly on. So we've seen, we've seen a lot of it. And it's, it's funny, like every time. You catch stuff that you don't see the first couple times too. I think that there are some of those shows like The Office and Impractical Jokers that are just on essentially 24-7 across the board. Yeah. And yeah. you can just yeah. turn it on and you, and you catch a piece of it. Um, yeah, some, sure. Something that hasn't really been replayed, and honestly, I started it again myself for the second time, Parks and Recreation on T-Bone's list. Everybody always said it was just like The Office, and it, it has those hints, obviously, as a mockumentary, yeah, but sorta, nothing the same. But- <laughs> no yeah it's it's not really Parks and Rec was actually the first show I watched I watched it maybe like five or six years ago it was the first show I watched like start to finish and like I think I think it's just hilarious like seems like not a lot of people have seen it like not a lot of my friends have seen it but I think it's really funny hilarious uh let's move on to video games 
Um, and I guess Vinny, we'll start with you just because you talked about <laughs> you you spent your nights playing them and went to bed way too late. So what what were well, the games yeah. that you were playing? Oh, that's cool. that's yeah, uh, cool. I'm not the only guilty <laughs> one here. <laughs> we play like that that clear. <laughs> no, we got a we got a pretty good group of guys. Like, I mean, it's a whole mix of guys. Like, guy, we play with guys from our team. We play I, there's a bunch of guys from high school. I still play with. Um. Yeah, so we've been playing mostly Call of Duty Modern Warfare. That's the newest one that's been out. We we were I haven't been on in a while. I think some of those guys are still getting on, but no, we played for <laughs> probably get on around I started saying I wasn't gonna get on until after nine, which is late. And then I would get off probably at like twelve. Um that's but yeah, we, we would play that we would play that that game a lot, Modern Warfare. But I think my all time favorite one is Call of Duty World War Two. And I was in New Jersey, actually. I didn't have much to do, so I would just sit in bed and basically play that after practice, which ended at, like, I'd be home by, like, three and just play that for way too many hours, kind of with the same group of guys. Um, another one that I – kind of different one I put on here was Wii Sports. That's just an all-time classic. We had the Wii. We'd, <laughs> we'd do the home run derby and the tennis and stuff and all that. I, no, you play the crazy. tanks, too? No, that was we play. That, that was Wii That wasn't Wii Sports. Yeah, as we play NHL 14. That's another one. I say NHL 14. That was on the old Xbox 360, and we'd put the settings on high impact and everything, all the rules off and stuff, and we'd just <laughs> take missile flap shots from the red line and be scoring, just burying guys in the corner and stuff from behind. <laughs> it just got out of control. <laughs> we thought that was pretty pretty entertaining. And then Fortnite too. That was that's another one we that was more last year, but everyone probably has that. Have you guys ever, I don't know if NHL made one, but there was like MLB Slugfest and NFL Blitz where it was essentially no rules when you played the sports? I haven't played that. I would. I don't think NHL has made one, but I, if NHL had one, I definitely would play it. I feel like NHL yeah. would have like NHL Slapshot or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah maybe, sure. maybe. Well, that's, that's basically what we would do like with NHL yeah. 14. <laughs> and 15, I have 15 on mine. We, we would turn like every single rule off and then put high impact on, which basically just made you shoot harder and hit harder. Skate faster, yeah. And skate faster, yeah. Fly so around. It was just chaos out there. But yeah, that's, that was the best. I think it, it might have been last week or two weeks ago, actually, we had somebody else put Wii Sports on there. That was the first one that okay. I saw, but yeah, we still play that's a that great game. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's such a good game. It's very entertaining. Really and it's not just one. There are a couple different ones. They all have their own challenges. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, T, on your list, same thing. Somebody, either last week or a couple of weeks ago, put Guitar Hero on there, which is not something oh, I don't think anybody... Like, so, for you, is it... <laughs> everybody, everybody likes Guitar Hero. Like, I, I love Guitar Hero. There was a period in time I was probably... Maybe man was probably in, high, in middle school and I was probably yeah, in, I was like, probably in middle school grade. you'd probably yeah yeah I might have been grade. like seventh grade or something yeah and like every single day after school we would just go down into our basement and play guitar hero he'd be on the drums I'd be on the guitar and we'd oh, yeah. play like we'd play like bleed it out body yeah and there are a few other ones like heavy heavy metal out. songs yeah. that are just not like <laughs> terrible songs yeah yeah opinion. but we would, we would we'd go there and just be down. banging on the drums and stuff yeah <laughs> Yeah, we got one. Oh, that was so. Oh fun. yeah. So is it the original Guitar Hero that's your favorite, or I mean, with the drums there was band, there was I think it was Band Hero, or yeah, I we think that's what no, it was. Rock band, band, what it was. Like, I think it was Rock Band. It wasn't Rock guitar, Band. It wasn't Rock Band. Guitar, it was Guitar Hero. Hero I, I think it's but guitar it had the drums. But it, yeah, yeah, it's like split screen, split screen on our TV. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they made a lot of different versions of that. Um, yeah. And then T Bone for you, Doodle Jump. <laughs> That Doodle is jump. one yeah, I don't Doodle think jump. anybody has had. <laughs> Doodle Jump is just like a classic phone game. Like if you, I remember when we were probably, I don't know, I was probably like the ages nine through like 13. Like if you didn't have anything to do, you just pull out your phone and play Doodle Jump. Or like that goes in the category of like Angry Birds and like Cut the Rope too, like those games. But yeah, like I think those, are, those games are underestimated because they're just on your phone. Not like console, but they're still really good. So what what are the phone games now? If you guys are taking a long road trip or sitting down in the house, what's the phone game you guys are on? Yeah, I don't. We don't like have many good phone games right now. Yeah. Kind of out of the loop. Like I don't know which ones are like good now. 
that's the that's the problem. Yeah, I never. I don't think I have a phone game on my phone. Actually, I kind of. I don't know. It's just kind of gone out of. Because yeah, when we want to play games, I guess in this household, <laughs> go down to the Xbox when we want to play games, kind of. So it's yeah. So were you guys part of? Uh, I know that there was a small crew on the team this year that played. I think it was like poker or something on, on their oh, phones. <laughs> oh, the were you phone guys part one. of that? The phone poker. No, I we played, weren't. I played yeah. like once on that, but we there was a few yeah. times where we had like all the boys over to our house and we had like real poker night in our basement. We had like a poker table and we had like I don't know what like fifteen dollar buy in, twenty dollar buy in. Yeah. Know. And <laughs> yeah, we that was played. Fun. We played. That was like three or four times, so that was really fun. But on the phone, it's just not the same. <clears throat> And then on to the music, sort of the last one. And this was another one I love to look through for both of you because it's, I don't think you guys have one current song on here. Um, nope. And T-Bone for you, Red, uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers have always loved my brother, one of my brother's favorite bands. But then also when I was in college, my roommate, it was his by far favorite band would play it all the time. Oh, so I yeah. think every single Red Hot Chili Pepper song has to be up there for me just because it's lodged in my brain. <laughs> yeah, they're just classic. Like, if I could Those see great, any band, yeah. any band, it might be them. Like, I know maybe the most of their songs of any band, and they're just, it's just, like, the type of music that it doesn't, like, ever, like, get annoying. You can just listen to it, and it just, like, kind of will be there, and I don't know. I, I just really like those, those songs. Like, Other Side and Snow are just my two favorites, probably, but I like a lot of other ones too. His high school, your high school uh, walkout song for hockey was a Chili Pepper yeah. song, actually. Yeah, it was. Uh, and then Vinny, for, <laughs> I just like to look at the lit, like Oye Como Va by Santana. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a great song, great <laughs> instrumentals. I love that kind of uh, thing. You know? a lot of, I think a lot of this current music is just terrible. And uh, there's a few guys on the team that kind of agree with me. Me and Steve would talk about this a lot. But no, I, I really enjoy kind of some different types of music. I don't necessarily have like, like these are just five songs that I, five good songs, I think. I kind of shift between songs that I listen to. Like when I like certain songs, I'll kind of listen to them too much and then I won't want to listen to them as much anymore. So the rotation's constantly changing. These are five, these aren't necessarily in the rotation right now. Uh, I don't really even know what is, but these are just five good ones that kind of, you can always listen to Oye Como Va. That's just a little Santana. You know, that's a great song. Santana. Anyone listening to this should look that up and, and really get a little shimmy shake to that song. Mr. Jones, that's just a classic song. Everyone knows that song, I think. Another one, Bites the Dust Queen, another classic. Uh, Boogie Wonderland by the old Earth, Wind, yeah. and Fire. Okay. That song's a Caddy Shack, actually. Yeah, when they're at the, uh, at the dinner thing or whatever, dancing. I think... I think that song's pretty funny. And then, well, Jammin, Jammin by Bob Marley. I don't know what it is. I think Jammin. That's just an, that's another good song. You kind of chill out, too. Yeah, T. Jack Johnson. I don't think I've seen anybody oh, in the hockey realm put Jack Johnson on the list. Jack we Jack love, Johnson. We love Jack oh, Johnson. I love Jack Johnson. Jack Johnson is just great. He's, he is so talented. He you know, there's there's a lot of good Jack Johnson songs. I I like Better Together. You know, Banana Pancakes is a great one. Sit and wait and watch him. You know, there's just a plethora of Jack Johnson songs that are just great. <laughs> and uh, I don't think I feel like a lot of people my age don't really like Jack Johnson. It's almost something that you grow into. But I don't know. He's he's one of my favorites. And then right back yeah, where we started from too. That's that's another great one. That's from I think I got that from Slapshot like when they're riding the bus and stuff that's just a great tune i like i like the the bgs on there i would have done staying alive just because for me uh, yeah. uh one of my favorite movies is airplane and it's oh, yeah. a prominent song and a flashback in airplane and it makes like every time that it happens it makes me laugh yeah that's yeah, another sure. i had that on there actually i ended up taking it off that's another great one it is a great one uh in the locker room were you guys ever I, i've asked a couple guys this were you guys ever the djs do you ever grab the aux cord and, and throw your phone on 
No, oh, no, I never did. I would, I would oh, more really? just like rip on the people playing music and tell them how bad their music was. Uh, it was usually Brandon. Sometimes it was Ricky. Ricky's was terrible. Oh God, I hope he oh. hears this. Um, Brock That's sometimes. A, times. a lot of these, a lot of guys. Some of the music they listen to, I just don't get it. I oh, think like some oh. of the rap stuff. I think it's, I think yeah. it's terrible. Uh, I don't know. Maybe some people told me I was like an old man for saying that, but I disagree. I just said no, it's not something I enjoy. Uh, no, I. But no, neither of us never had the ox. We probably should have. We pretty much we'd more like just suggest songs like if we wanted yeah. them, but it was more like just ripping on whoever had it for like whatever. I don't know. Yeah, I think I'm more just. You guys play good songs. Yeah. You guys play good songs. I feel. I feel like every time I walked in there, it was Brandon's phone. I don't think I saw yeah, anybody yeah. else. Yeah, Brandon Brandon was kind yeah. of default. Like, if nobody had it, like, he'd just do it. But Stover would do it a lot, too. And he he played some bad songs. But he was pretty open oh, to suggestions, Stover. too. So that's the bad was, ones. <laughs> like, because me and Jack kind of sat, like, in the corner back with him. And, like, if we would suggest one, he'd, like, usually be open to it. But, you know, like, Stover, so. I was gonna say I the only time I think I saw Stove was you guys would go out before a game, you'd go up to the gym and work and work out or warm up or do whatever, and Stove would be in there doing some hand eye stuff and he would just oh, have yeah. it on blasting at full volume. Yeah. Like oh, <laughs> yeah. pure rap all the time. Oh yeah. 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 And it's funny too, because uh Coach Suter, he just he hates it too. Like if if it's oh, he, he walks rap, in, yeah. If, yeah, if he if he walks in and like that kind of music is playing, he just like shakes his head and gets off the yeah, like, this is terrible. <laughs> I rem- it was an early road trip. I remember. I don't think T was with us yet, and we were in uh, we were in Plymouth taking on USA, and you guys had a rap on, and and Garrett came in. He was like, "Listen, you guys are gonna go with hard rock from now on." and nothing else <laughs> and you guys yeah. it was like the saturday yeah. to sunday game after garrett was suspended and will took over and oh no yeah guys... that was Keith's first weekend yeah it was, was it <laughs> yeah that was that's yeah. I, yeah that's hilarious that is funny I, yeah I, I think i can remember that pretty much took the the ox away from pap and told him only if he plays rock music <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he doesn't he doesn't mind some of like the, the like techno stuff either i don't think he necessarily like yeah it, like the Electro he can tolerate stuff. that. Yeah. Yeah. He likes it a lot better than like the hard rap stuff. The rap. Yeah. <laughs> but we, it's good though, because like we agree with him on that. So like when that kind of went away, we both liked it. So <laughs> yeah, I was pumped. <laughs> Got you guys a little more ready for the games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 I guess you could say that. Uh, and then I always like asking some of these questions here at the end. Uh, so we'll start off. Who do you guys see as, as being your NHL comparison? Uh, I'd say for me, maybe a guy like Brennan Gallagher or Tyler Johnson, just like they're both smaller guys that get in there and they're pretty gritty. Brad Marchant too. Like I, I don't like to lick people or any of that kind of stuff. Or like he kind of crosses that line a little too far sometimes, but he's no one could disagree that he's a great player. He had probably like, he had over a point a game this year again, and he's just great. So smaller undersized guys like that but still produce and are gritty for me yeah for me i think i mean i try to play as much like jared spurgeon on the wild that i can he's about my size i think uh and he's i mean he's one of the most underrated players in the league i think he's kind of starting to uh be exposed a little more now like people are knowing who he is people are people are finding out Uh, he plays with he plays with ryan Suter, obviously but yeah, I try to. I mean, watching those guys is pretty. That's how you want to be. I mean, I don't really come anything close to that, but I try. <laughs> uh, being from the Madison area, you guys are sort of caught between Chicago and Minneapolis, and so I guess, real question here is: Are you guys more Hawks fans, Wild fans, or is there a third-party team in there? For no, sure, we're wild. For we're sure. wild. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> especially because Ryan's on the team. Like, we kind of liked the Wild before he was even there. I mean, that was a while ago, but, mm-hmm. oh, it's it's wild. And I've, I've seen that a little more, and I, I wonder why that is that this, again, we're, I think, two and a half hours from Chicago, about four hours from Minneapolis. So you'd expect there to be a little more Chicago, but I feel most people that we talked to, even before Ryan came to the Wild, was, yeah. was more Minnesota-based. 
Yeah, for sure. And when I played for the mission too, like all those guys obviously love the Blackhawks and that just made me like dislike them even more. <laughs> like just whenever you even Chicago though, like, people. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh Chicago. Yeah. What do you mean <laughs> oh, Chicago people? <laughs> it, sucks. <laughs> it sucks too because when I was on the mission, that was when the Blackhawks were like so good. Like they were winning they won what three cups in five years. So mm-hmm. Like, I, I didn't really have anything going for me in that sense, but I still like to argue with them about it. Uh, but So between you two, who would you say is the better dancer? Dancer? That's yeah. me. I'd say T thinks he is, but I'd say he dances like a girl. I I think I, I, think I once I get, I think once I get <laughs> in my groove, you don't even, I'm much... You don't even... I'm, I'm much better at, you know, going along with the song and, you know, starting to feel good. I think T kind you don't, of you don't get forces into it, it a little bit, you know? No. No, no. no. I think, I think, no. I think I'm, you, it's more rare for me to dance, but when I do, you know, it's not bad. I'll put it that way. <laughs> not bad. Not good, though. <laughs> <laughs> I never said it was good. Right. So I think that might be what we have to do then is I think you guys are each going to have to send in some of your best dance moves. We'll put it out on a, on a Twitter poll. Yeah. It seems to be the way that we're going at this point. I don't know. I don't know if that can happen. You know, usually you got to pay for that kind of thing. If you want to see me dance. That's just... <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Not a lot of people get that action for free. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who would you say if you guys are going out, who's, who takes longer to get ready? I don't. Know. We're, we're pretty. I think prob- we'll probably probably me because I don't like to look as much like a homeless person as T. I like to kind of, you know, keep it tight. <laughs> Even like true. the scruff of my face is too long for me. I need a haircut too. Oh, I I, I did have a pretty wicked stash. Gets, oh, I can't get ridiculous. a haircut though. It's not. It's not my. That's not my yeah. fault. Yeah. So I, I think I'm a little. I'm a little more uh, into my personal hygiene than him. So probably he is more of a. He is more of like a though. personal personal uniform like yes maybe like three or four like dark colored shirts three or four pairs of pants <laughs> just like his go-to never feel yeah. uncomfortable in any situation that's true <laughs> I, that's a good point uh who has the messier room at home oh him Mine is well me me but my room is not like bad at all like yeah, i've been because- keeping it tight lately Okay. Well, before before we had to stay at home for months on end, his room was a disaster. You can't even yeah. walk in there. I thought you're gonna step in a rat trap or something walking through the middle of it. It's like a war zone in there. It was bad. It was bad. But I I yeah. cleaned that up. That chapter. I think I kind of, I think I kind of learned to keep my room and all my things pretty tidy, like living away from home and stuff. And that's something T obviously hasn't done. But ever since I've kind of mature in that sense i've kept my room pretty clean make my bed every day that kind of thing he seem, it seems like you should just be at boot camp according to t you have a very I, nice I and should. tight room oh, you have your outfits planned and ready to go I, I know i know a strict routine if you get him off that routine he's gonna have a fit <laughs> yeah yeah i like i like having a routine uh who's more likely to take something of the other brothers without asking him every time <laughs> constantly but wearing my clothes that, and it just puts me into that, a rage like if i if i wore something of his clothes like he he obviously would have a fit but if he wore oh. something in my clothes i wouldn't even be mad about it like that's that's the so, difference Vinny, would well, you wear something of t-bones though that's the thing i wouldn't wear anything of his <laughs> i don't i wouldn't want to because i don't know when the last time what about, that you've worn my, what about my jean jacket you've worn that i wore that once because that was what i had laying around <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, no, okay. Whatever. I don't think you had ever worn it. Okay, maybe. But yeah. that's when that's when like they'll have a pair of socks. Like we have all the same socks, and like somehow I'll put a pair of socks on that isn't mine. I don't even know. And then he'll like point it out and get all pissed off about it. Yeah, that's the problem. You don't know. You should know what stuff is yours. And stuff is. <laughs> They're all the same. I wouldn't have a problem if you wore it. If you put it back where it goes, that's the issue. You wore a yeah. T-shirt of mine, and then I see it like on the floor, on my floor, and like a ball. That's not going to go over well. I don't like having wrinkly clothes, and you don't see mine. So that's that's where the issue lies. I like the drama. I 
I have not had that this much arguments among brothers yet, and I've interviewed a couple, so I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, this guy, he's, he's got to learn somehow. He needs the iron. He needs the iron, like all of his clothes. He doesn't wear like a shirt out unless it's ironed. That's not true. Not a, <laughs> it's also not a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. 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 Even if it were true, like maybe I should start doing that. You know, ironing my gym shorts. <laughs> Who would you say is the more competitive brother? I don't know. That's, I don't know. That's, that's yeah, kind of, pretty, pretty similar. Cool. So I guess that's pretty even. It's, it's tough. Like, against against each other, probably me, but just in general, probably pretty similar. Like, against other people and stuff. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, when we play golf together, there's never really, like, a time where we're not, like, being competitive. Even if we're not playing against each other, like, it's always yeah. there's always something. Oh yeah, we always got action going on the course. Yeah. What's uh what's the course of choice in the area? Uh we usually play at Nakoma. We got a family membership there, which is super nice. We're super lucky to have that. Obviously you did nothing to earn that, just got lucky, but we uh yeah, so that's mostly where we play. And we got some buddies that are members at places that sometimes we're their guests. Uh, who would you say has the bigger social media presence? I don't. I don't. I feel like really there's not to... a ton on either of you. So. No, neither of us are like huge uh, into social media. Like I, uh, I feel like I might have been like maybe like two years ago. Mine was probably a little bit bigger, but like I've kind of simmered down since then. Like I, on Instagram, like I have like one post in the last year or something. So yeah, I been, me too. Probably been too into that like lately. Yeah. I have zero posts and zero posts in my Instagram lifestyle. So <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's about down. where I am with Keep that. Yeah. Off the grid. yeah. Like to be yeah. off the grid. Absolutely. Like as much as yeah. don't worry, I only do social media for the team, not myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's your job, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um who would you guys say is the bigger prankster? Me for sure. Right. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe you. There's a there's a period of time during the season where there's a mouse trap going around. It was like yeah. circular. It was circular. I did. Like I did have a mouse room. trap. He brought it in on the like, bus. He had it. Yeah, he had it for a good while. But then there was a period where like I had it, and then there's a period where we didn't know who had it. So like every time you'd like get dressed, you'd like look in your glove, you like tip it upside down and stuff, like just to make sure. And I was. You're yeah. walking on your like, tiptoes everywhere during that. I like period. to keep guys on their toes. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, if you guys were doing a, a shootout at practice, who's the one that's going to score first? Me, yeah. me, yeah. both. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. That's kind of funny. He's the four and needs to be scoring goals. I could buy a goal, but when we get to the old shootouts, you know, I'm not going to say I'm bad. Right. No, you're not. You're not bad. How many? How many? How many times did you win the shootout this year? (laughs) Okay, the same amount you went. (laughs) No, I won once. You won zero. Oh, how many times did you win it? I thought you said yeah. Go. No, I mean the win. When did you win? You won last last year. Yeah, I won it. Oh, no, I never won. I was in the winners bracket a lot, so I never could freaking pull it off. Though. Either of you have to be lemon or no. No, have to be, no, 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 God, no. <clears throat> that was like reserved for. Dude, I was at the bear down. I was there's there's one time where I was like in the final four. Is like I think it was me, Kerwin, Johnny, and maybe like Eric, and I I got out of it, which was great. And I don't know, I was I was skating on thin ice, so I thought I was gonna get it. <laughs> What's the best USHL arena you guys played in? We didn't get to go to Sioux Falls, which kind of sucked. Yeah. I, I've heard that's the best one. I think atmosphere-wise, probably Waterloo, but, like, as the rink, like, they're, we played on New Year's Eve, and they just they pack them in there and get pretty rowdy. But I think Fargo is probably the nicest one. Oh, yeah, Fargo's rink's ridiculous. They, there's yeah. Green, too. Like, they're jumbo yeah. Trump. Yeah, they're... There was a few times we played in Green Bay, too. That It was pretty packed. Green Bay is good, yeah. We got I lucky. Like we we were in Green Bay for uh, their Dash for Cash, which is probably their most filled game of the year. 
where they yeah uh, yeah i think you guys were probably in the locker room for it i don't think you got a chance but they drop all the cash on the ice and they have teachers run out oh yeah, yeah no i that. did get to see yeah. that i did get to see that because me and yana had concussions that that weekend oh. <laughs> so i i was sitting in the stands and man that was nuts they like dropped a bunch of cash and they're all grabbing it it's like ten thousand dollars and they get i think it's like 20 teachers on a, a yeah. bunch of giant mats in the center and they have to try and rush and they like put it in their shirts and yeah. whatever you yeah. come away with you get to Crazy. use it's sweet Crazy. Wow. yeah that was a good atmosphere no mercy out there <laughs> yeah <laughs> no everyone for themselves but they're trying to, everybody tries to like get their own little area and then they like everybody else invades it kind of it's like it's entertaining yeah. Vinny, for you and in, in your different levels where would you say is the best arena still here in the u or is there anything in the yeah, all? For sure, by far, no. Well, Fairbanks actually, Fairbanks. I wouldn't say it's like nice, but it's pretty small. Uh, and they, I think they might be second in the league or something in attendance. And they just pack them in every time. I mean, they're, they're like right on top of you too, and they're kind of. They sit behind the. They sit behind. The, oh yeah, they sit behind the bench and bang on the glass, and all your backup sticks end up falling on you like ten times a game. So that was always mm-hmm. a fun place to play. You never got to play in the South, did you? No, I didn't. Those were those are pretty cool. I know that uh, when I was in Odessa, we had a game against Wichita Falls where there was some issue in overtime where the officials weren't calling it the way they should have. Oh, yeah. We had a kid coming yeah. with a broken hand because of it, and uh, our fans actually broke through the glass on the bench. Oh, my <laughs> and, God. Uh, yeah. yeah. So That's the South, it was, the South for you. <laughs> <laughs> it was rowdy. Uh, Shreveport, yeah. though, when Shreveport came back, I think their stadium held maybe 4,000 people. And for the first year, I feel that they averaged about 3,500. And I yeah, mean, there are some teams in good. this league that get to do it too, but it was first year back. Yeah, it was ridiculous. It. They, yeah. They yeah. It. <laughs> um, yeah. Some of those South Arena I've heard are pretty cool. I haven't seen any of them, though. Yeah, well, so Emerald is supposed to be pretty cool. Yeah, if they packed it more, I think it'd be better. Um, yeah. The whole reason, though, is all those teams used to be part of the CHL, the Central, oh, yeah, I think right. the Central yeah. Hockey League. Yeah. So yeah. they're all playing, they're all even in Odessa, teams. it's yeah. like 5,000 you know, 5, capacity, 6,000 capacity. So it's something that the USHL would hold in a sense. But yeah, mm-hmm. yeah it's USHL packs it a little better and, and can actually yeah. sell them out. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, for the team this year, if you guys were in a tag team match, who who would you bring to the ring as your partner? For like again, do we know? Do we know like who your partner is? No, it's just some random, okay. uh, some other random tag team. <laughs> okay. Maybe maybe Brandon. I'll take Brandon. Oh yeah, I think I think it'd have to be Brandon for sure. Maybe be Steve too. Steve's a That's scrapper, Steve. but Brandon's got a little more experience under his belt. Yeah, he does. So I think it'd be Brandon. Brandon's been around a little bit, so yeah, he's, he's been, been around. Brandon. Yeah. Uh, if you guys we had both, to move, hmm? I, I was gonna say we both had a, had our own like few tussles with Brandon. He's, he's a pretty pretty strong kid, so it'd <laughs> yeah. be a good one to have. Uh, if you guys had to do a movie with the team, a sad movie, who's who's most likely to cry? Ricky. Uh, I was gonna say Ricky too. <laughs> no, no wait on that one. That was right away. <laughs> yeah, Ricky's a yeah, I hope guy. he hears this too. <laughs> he's, an, he's an emotional guy. Second time he's you sort of thrown it. <laughs> I can see Reed. I can see Reed crying. Yeah, I can see Reed too. See Reed getting sensitive. <laughs> oh man. Um, if you guys are leaving a road trip, who's most likely to leave their stuff behind? I don't know. I can I can see Brandon leaving his stuff behind. I could definitely see Brandon. I think he forgot something this year at one point. He better forgot his jersey to Pittsburgh or something. Or maybe he didn't <laughs> like they maybe the team forgot it, but it was because he had it at home or something. I don't know. Something happened there. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I, I remember that. <laughs> just playing with him throwing up, there's plenty of times where like he'd like not have a Get skate or something. <laughs> yeah. Two different skates, yeah. Uh, who's most likely to drop their phone just after buying it? I don't know. Nobody really that clumsy? He probably. Me? Yeah. <laughs> no. No. 
I guess you I do drop my phone. I dropped my phone down the entire flight of stairs the other day. It was bad. It, it didn't even yeah. crash. So I don't know. I could I could see Ricky dropping his phone like the day he got it Ricky too. too. Ricky Ricky broke like a chandelier in our house this year. So, yeah, <laughs> he got that going too. Yeah, he almost started crying <laughs> too. So broken. Yeah. <laughs> Just from like not absolutely nothing. He's like doing he an impression, like, like yeah, he's like flying in his arms around and hit it. Trailer park boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it. yeah. Uh, who's the best kid to room with on the road? <clears throat> we I don't know. Someone, someone. I can't clean. really. Who, who, yeah, I I don't know. I can't really say who the best would be because I obviously didn't room with everybody. But there was one time when. Me in Fargo, there's the really nice rooms in Fargo where me, uh, Brock and Ben all shared a room, and it was re- that was really fun. They had a lot of fun in that room, but yeah, they usually put us together, and then we had three in a room. It's easy enough. They just expect you guys to share a bed together. So yeah, I guess. I just sleep. What did I sleep in? Like the chair one time. No, I didn't <laughs> sleep in the office yeah. chair. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we always like try to get like a little mini cot brought in by like the yeah the front desk. Uh, who on the team is most likely to go in for a big hit, whiff, and hit the boards? <laughs> well, I Kerwin did do that one. I can think of a time that he did that in Fargo, but he that well, he like doesn't a hit a ton. Thing. Yeah, that was like yeah, a one-time yeah. thing. So. I'd say Steve or Ricky, because they're probably the two biggest, or Brandon. Those three are always just running they around some, trying they to They had some good kill hits, they would they had a few yeah. wins, too. Yeah. The two that pop into my mind are probably Ricky and, and Jack. I just feel that Jack would oh, go Jack, in. Jack, for Jack. sure. Those legs yeah, would just yeah, start Jack, going, and there's Jack. no stopping him. <laughs> yeah, 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 I can, I can totally see that. See <laughs> him toe-pecking going to the boards. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then if you guys were to be in a team eating contest, who do you think would win? I don't know. Who's a big eater? I feel like uh, maybe Hunter Weiss would have some pull in that one. Oh, yeah, I think he would. He's a big boy. Yeah, he's a big he boy. He take Steve, down some Steve food. Too. I feel like Steve could take down some food. <laughs> I feel like he could, too. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know who else. A lot of people I asked said Steve, and even Steve said Steve. He's like, I think it'd be me. He's like, I, I used, I think it was with Thibaut. And he's like, I used to sit at the front of the bus after games, and we would just eat all the food that's up there. And <laughs> oh, man, he's yeah. like, I think it'd there'd definitely be, be me. <laughs> there would be time be on there bus trip, eating though. chocolate chip muffins in the front. <laughs> yeah, like on the way back from like long bus trips, like Youngstown and Fargo. Me, we we always stand in the same spots, obviously. And me and Steve are like across from each other. And we'd both just be up at like, it'd be like 3 a.m. just pounding bags of chips. We had that huge, huge bags of chips. And we just grab them and pound them. And we'd make just like the funniest like impressions and stuff. And he's eating the chips. It was just, I don't know. You, you can't put it to words, but it's just, I don't know. Well, guys, thanks thanks for coming on. I hope you stay safe and, uh, you know, hopefully the season starts back up. T will see you and Vinny will be following you along your journey. Sounds good. Thanks, Cody. Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks, Cody. Thanks, guys.